Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and we're doing things a little differently this week. Uh, I don't have a full G.I. Joe toy review for you this week. Um, I'm taking the weekend off, not really off, but I just needed the extra time to catch up a little bit on the regular reviews. So I will have a regular G.I. Joe toy review for you next week. Uh, but uh, since we don't have a review this week, I thought we would do something a little special. Uh, I have here a boxed, unopened, G.I. Joe Scorpion Desert Attack Vehicle, a Cobra Battle Corps Vehicle from 1994. And I thought we would just open it up and put it together. I know some collectors are opposed to opening and assembling vintage vehicles. In this case, this is not a rare toy. You can still find plenty of these out there in the box, sealed in mint condition. Uh, so I'm not really depleting the supply for those who want to get this and keep it in the box. You can still get them uh, and you don't have to hunt all that hard for them. Uh, but for my purposes, for reviews, I need to have them loose. And uh, the best way to get a loose mint vehicle is to take it out of the box and I will be the first one to put it together and see it completed. So uh, I'm going to give that a try today. Uh, I would not do this if it were a rare toy. If it were uh, a vehicle from the 80s um, or any rare vehicle, I, I wouldn't do this. Um, the only reason I'm doing it on this one is because, because it's not rare. Uh, so I really don't think there should be that much controversy with me opening this up and seeing what's inside. There's also a variation on this vehicle. Uh, some of the Scorpion Desert Attack vehicles uh, had a lighter color body with the darker color uh, accessories. And others had the colors reversed, where it was the darker body and the lighter accessories. And I don't know which one this is, so we're going to be surprised. Uh, we'll open it up and see which one of the variations we have. I got this vehicle because I do intend to use it in an upcoming video. This is not on the slate to be reviewed in the near future, but I did want to have it for a different review because I wanted to show it. So um, I thought I'd go ahead and get this. It was uh, inexpensive relatively inexpensive and uh, it appears to really be sealed it does not look like it was resealed it looks like it's factory sealed so um, let's open her up and let's put it together i have the tools that i will probably need uh, and um, let's be the first to see this gi joe scorpion out of the box i gave some thought about the best way to open this without damaging the box any more than necessary and it looked like oh, running a blade uh, basically down the glue holding this side together would probably be the best way so i'm going to attempt to do that without cutting my fingers and hopefully also without cutting the box i really just want to yeah peel away that uh glue yeah I think that should work. I, I really am trying to be careful uh, because when I eventually do review this toy, I will want to show the box as well and I would like the box to be in as good a condition as possible. So I'm trying not to crease this side, but I'm also trying to run this blade down and just kind of cut right where the glue is. Just separate the glue. And there we go. It is now an open box. So let's put our blade away, safety first. And let's, um, yeah, this is a 90s vehicle, so the inside of the uh, box, it's got the cardboard tray that you pull out. We've done a couple um, 90s vehicles, and that seems to be how they are all boxed. So sliding the cardboard tray out, uh, we see a few other things that are familiar to us from 90s vehicles. Set the box aside. Uh, this is a catalog. Uh, this is, this looks like a catalog that came with 93 vehicles, or 1993. It's got some Ninja Force. Um, we've looked at this catalog before. I'm not going to look at it too closely. But um, interesting that. Uh, 
that is still the 1993 catalogs in a 1994 vehicle. Of course, 1994 was the final year of the vintage G.I. Joe toy line. It was canceled after that year. And then we have this, um, which appears to be, let's see, Terrifying Lasers of Destruction. Terrifying, and we've got a menacing maze on the back. Um, and this is, yeah, this is a mail-away catalog. Uh, and in the mail away catalog, it, there's a lot of a lot of 1993 items. Um, and in fact, uh, is that a there's a uh, a ninja viper on that battle barge? That's interesting. So yeah, and there's a the 1993 rapid deployment force mail away set. So this is a bunch of 93 stuff and 1992 stuff, like I said, because there's the Goldhead Steel Brigade form right there. Fascinating. Uh, so that was in there. And then we have some parts. Uh, we have some bagged parts. Uh, we have the instruction sheet uh, and the blueprints. Should have the blueprints on that side and the instruction sheet on that side. We'll follow that to put the thing together. We have four wheels. There we go. Uh, looks like we have the chassis and uh, what looks like a missile launcher. Uh, and then we have the sticker sheet. And this appears to be the um, variant with the dark colored body and the lighter colored accessories. So that's the variant we got. Um, when I review this vehicle, of course, I will want to have both variations, but now I know which one to look for. Um, I've got this one, I'll need to look for the other one. Uh, so uh, what I will do first uh, is I will browse through the instruction sheet and make sure um, I have everything I need and I know what I'm supposed to do. All right, I think I have a pretty good idea of what I'm supposed to do to assemble it. I think one thing that's interesting in step three, it has a warning, one time assembly. Uh, it says a once assembled cannot be taken apart. So I guess we better do that one the, the right the first time. Uh, so I want to open the sealed bag. Okay, so I'm going to open the sealed bag for all the small parts, and then we will see what's what. Uh, we'll, looks like we've got to take some things off of a plastic uh, tree. We've got uh, three missiles. They're hanging pretty loose. Probably don't even have to cut those off. Looks like the hood, um, some other parts. Almost looks like there's a part missing there. We'll have to check on that. And, uh, or, oh, I bet this is, this part just fell off. Um, looks like a turret and, uh, and a bumper. And I think that's it. So let's follow step one. Uh, let me move these a bit so that you can see them better as we assemble them. And step one is the vehicle hood assembly. And it suggests uh, that we snap these three teeth into uh, which bar? This bar right here, the top bar right there, which you probably can't see too well because it is dark, it's black. Uh, so it looks like we're supposed to snap it on like that uh, and then close the hood. One issue with that is that uh, we've got some plastic teeth here and um, we've got three teeth if one of those breaks while we're assembling it, um, this thing is not going to work right. So I'm going to have to be a little bit cautious in placing this on this top bar. Oh, it went on without any trouble at all. Uh, well, that's helpful. At least it didn't require a lot of force to place it on. No risk of breaking those teeth. Uh, so that's the hood. Uh, the hood does lift, and there is some engine detail under the hood. So there's that. The next is the front bumper assembly. Um, position the, okay, where's the front bumper? There is the front bumper. Looks like that's the front, this is the back. Um, that's the top. 
and it says to uh, position the bottom of bumper below the front of the vehicle, then snap slots up into lower front bar as shown. So position it in the, all right, hold on. This is gonna take one second, make sure I'm doing it right. Okay, I get it. There, there's, there are some slots down here that this little bar is supposed to fit into, and then it's supposed to swing up, and then it's got some teeth that connect to this lower bar. So that may take a little bit of effort to line up, but let's see. Um, almost got it. And again, we have these teeth that are supposed to grip around this bar. And if for any reason they don't go on easily, then they could break. And then the whole thing is not going to hold together properly. Yeah, that is not going together easily at all. It doesn't look like it'll quite line up is what it looks like. Um, it looks like the, the teeth for this clip is resting below the bar. And I've got to be very cautious about this. Oh, there it goes. Did it actually snap in? Did that actually snap in? I think it might have. All right, well that, all right, that worked better than I thought. Um, the teeth for this front grill, uh, once you slide it in the way it looks like it's supposed to go, seems to be resting well below the bar that they're supposed to snap into. But I guess if you work it well enough, you can get it, uh, get it to snap on. So there you go, we have the hood and we have the front grill and that moves us to step three, which we have the warning uh, one time assembly only. Uh, oh, this is a, an axle. That is not a turret. So let's see. This is the turret. Um, and it goes into the uh, hold back. So this right here. This hole right here is for this turret right there. And then I'm told by the instruction sheet that once I snap this in, it cannot be removed. And I can see why not because it's got it's got some ridges on the inside that's going to grip this mushroom clip pretty tightly uh, once I press it in, and yeah, that'll be about impossible to get out. But at any rate, it goes this way, and you press it in, uh, press it in. Oh man, that's tight. Hold on. Ah, there we go. All right, it's in. Uh, it rotates, pretty tight rotation on that. But yeah, that's in solid. You'll never get that out once you get that in. So that's fine, that's fine. As long as it's not breaking while we're trying to assemble it, that's okay. Uh, so now we need to cut a piece off of this plastic tree. And I need to find my knife again. Um, the piece we need to cut off is this one. This is another turret, and it is a turret for, looks like, the spring-loaded spring -loaded missile launcher. Uh, it appears to go on this turret. How does it work? Oh, like that. Um, so should we put the turret on the missile launcher first, or should we put the turret in the body, and then the missile launcher on, um, on it then? Let's see. Um, snap launcher pivot into turret hole. So it says to do this first, so let's do it first. So this goes into this hole in the front here. Uh, it's another mushroom clip. Uh, we do not have a warning that it can never be removed, but I have a feeling that once we get this in, it ain't ever coming out. All right, well, ah, there we go. Snapped in, that was an awfully loud snap when I hear plastic make that noise, it always makes me nervous. Um, and then this, this bar on the bottom of the missile launcher should rest right in there. And it's got some ridges on it that run along some ridges on the inside of the clip. So I believe this would ratchet. Let's see. Yeah, it has a ratchet. Uh, not great elevation, but some. All right, cool. Uh, so there's that. 
Uh, it says, caution, do not aim weapon at eyes or face. Well, it's too late. I'm aiming it at my eyes right now. Um, the, the missiles. Okay, let's... It's got three missiles. Um, only one, of course, can fit into the launcher at a time. But I believe we have... Yes, we have some pegs for the remaining missiles, which is nice. I, I, I like it when vehicles do that. You're going to have spring-loaded... Uh, missiles and you have more than one. I won't put, press that all the way in. Um, then it's nice to have an extra peg or two for the remaining missiles. Well, there's one peg. Where's uh, where's a peg for the other one? Uh, oh, I see. It goes like that. So the other two missiles peg into the back here. Uh, let's go ahead and test out this test out this missile. Let's see. Press it all the way in. Okay, looks like the trigger is here on the top. And let's fire. Oh yeah! Alright, that went straight off the table. I will collect that later. But the spring-loaded launcher works great. Uh, so now we have the rear axle assembly. For some reason I thought this was a turret. It's not. It's a rear axle. And that goes in the back. Uh, the front wheels have a kind of a molded in axle um, on the chassis, but the back wheels fit on this axle. And I had noticed there's a, um, a sticker with a random number, I guess a parts number of some kind, on there. And we've seen that on a few other G.I. Joe vehicles as well. Um, something done at the factory, I guess. So let's see how to do this and let's try to do it right. Hold vehicle upside down, fit rear, rear axle, grooves into sides of vehicle, uh, snap axle tabs in place. And it looks like it goes this way because this hook goes in the back. Oh, I see. So if you do it that way, so we should be able to just press this in, in theory. That's tight. And it makes me nervous to put a lot of pressure on old plastic. So let's let's take it easy here. Let's take it easy. Okay, it did go. It, it went. Okay, so it snapped into place. Um, no breakage at all. Rear axle is in. So now we have four wheels to assemble or to attach. And once again, we have a one-time assembly warning. So. Once these wheels go on, they never ever come off again. And the way they appear to assemble, it looks like they will... We're going to have some exposed clips on the outside of the wheels. Expo exposed clips instead of hubcaps. That's never my favorite way that, to do these wheels, but that's what we got. So let's do four wheels. All right. All four wheels appear to be identical. So it shouldn't matter which one goes into which peg. One in. Two in. I'm not sure if I will like the variant with the lighter color body more than the one with the black body. I'm not sure. I'll just have to get the other one and uh, look at them side by side. Um, and decide which one I like the best. That's three. And finally, there. Uh, we have wheels. And that leaves one part that is... Oh, yeah, it is on the instruction sheets. Um, the, the gas can. Uh, the fuel tank as it's called on the instruction sheet. But this uh, this little jerry can here, which, safety first, there we go, uh, which fits into this little slot in the back. So that's kind of cool. So earlier GI Joe vehicles had a tradition of um, having these jerry cans like the first couple versions of the vamp uh, had these and vamp mark ii had water cans but you know same idea 
Uh, so that's nice, a little extra accessory there. Uh, and that is fully assembled. This thing is done. It's together. But that leaves us to my favorite part, which is putting on the sticker sheet. Okay, uh, let's start with step one, which is sticker number one, which is a little instrument panel that is supposed to go on this little space here uh, behind the missile launcher. Looks like uh, just some instruments and gauges. Let's try to get that as straight as possible. Uh, these are paper stickers, not our classic vinyl stickers, so they have a bit more vibrant colors than what we typically saw on uh, vinyl stickers. But the trade-off is they're not very forgiving. Uh, once you place them, they don't want to come up again, so you have to be very cautious to put them in the right position before you lay them down. In fact, i got to move these missiles out of the way because they are, they are absolutely in the way of this one. Um, and this one I'm going to try to get as straight as I can. Looks like it's supposed to go a bit lower, so let's put it right, right there. That is not straight. I did not get that straight, but that is part of the problem with these. Um, and even though, yeah, if I tried to peel that up, it would just tear the paper. So, uh, for better or worse, that one is on. Um, and the next step is, oh, well, there's, um, there's uh, some kind of a technical panel, like with a, some circuitry layout that goes uh, right in front of the driver. And let's see, which way is up? That way is up. Let's peel it. Let's try to get this one straighter. So uh, it goes all the way down there. And let's press it on. There. That one's much better. I got that one a bit straighter, but not perfect. Not perfect. Next step. So we got some instrument panel stickers, um, which I don't think you can see very well, but we got them. And then we have on the, what is that? That's the back. We have a sticker that says uh, Desert Scorpion. Now that is interesting that it says Desert Scorpion. This is the Scorpion Desert Attack Vehicle, but the Desert Scorpion was actually the name of an action figure. An action figure that was no longer on the pegs at the time this vehicle was sold. But I suppose if you had the Desert Scorpion, it would be a pretty good driver for your Scorpion. So there's that. Desert Scorpion on the back. Uh, we have two of those stickers, so it looks like the other one goes on the side here. Let's go ahead and place that one. Let's get it as straight as we can and lined up as close as possible to where the sticker sheet tells us to put it. There we go. Desert Scorpion on the side. Uh, oh, I missed one that's supposed to go on the back. Number seven. Number seven, warning area. So it's uh, apparently that's a very dangerous area of the vehicle and it's uh, required a warning. And that goes just below the gas can in that space right there. And there reasonably straight on that one. Next, oh, we have a step. We have uh, two step si the stickers. Um, and the step stickers are very important because if you stepped in the wrong spot, Lord knows what could happen. So uh, there are two of them and they each go on these uh, running boards here. So let's place them. 
so you can know where to step and you don't run into trouble stepping where you shouldn't. Alright, so let's place that on. I always do the stickers last, but for some of this, these vehicles, and perhaps for this one, it would have been easier to place some of the stickers before putting the other parts on. Like these in particular, um, I kind of have to work around the wheels. If I had put these stickers on before I put the wheels on, that would not be a problem. But we got them. So we got some step stickers on each side. Uh, next, what's next? Oh, um, each side of hood. Uh, explain that to me. How does that work? Uh, we have these uh, these purple and black stripe stickers. Now this is something I need to make sure I understand because that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, okay, so it's doing this thing that some of these 90s vehicles did that I don't like. It's telling me to put a sticker that's directly over some of the molding on the hood. Two stickers, in fact. And uh, that's not going to work very well. So I'm going to try to place them in this space here where they will barely fit, but they will not interfere with the molding. There's two of them. And they are not precisely where the sticker sheet tells me to put them, but realistically I think it's the only place where they can be. So there we go. We have some hood stickers and that leaves uh, only two more. There is a black Cobra emblem inside a purple circle. That goes on the hood, the very center, right here. Like so. Let's try to get that straight, or as straight as we can. Okay, so that's on. Not bad, not bad. So we got Cobra on the hood, right, right there. And one more sticker that goes where? It goes here. And that is, it says explosive contents. Uh, just, my, just like my videos. Explosive contents. Okay, and it's kind of pink. So I guess it would be a pink explosion. And that just goes right here. Oh, that is not wanting to go on straight. Let's, let's be careful with that because we can only apply it once. And it's on. And that's it. We have a fully assembled and stickered Cobra Scorpion from 1994 with the variation that has the black body and the uh, light tan colored hood and uh, other accessories. That was my assembly video of the 1994 Scorpion from the Battle Horse series uh, for Cobra. And uh, I always enjoy doing these. Uh, it's very nostalgic. Um, even though these 90s vehicles are not quite exactly like the 80s vehicles, I still do get some uh, nostalgia buzz out of assembling these. So there you have it. I have all the extra pieces and packaging that I will keep in the box. I keep all that stuff um, anyway, even though most people will probably uh, throw it away. I just never know if I want to use it. I may never use that stuff, but I keep it anyway. Uh, but there you have it. Uh, this guy you will see in a video pretty soon, but not in its own review. It's not ready for its own review yet. I, I still have to get the variation. I have to get the one with the light body and the dark accessories, so I'll be on the lookout for that. Uh, so thanks, and um, although there's no new review this week, there will be one next week. Uh, I am working on it now, and I hope you enjoy that one. Uh, so thanks everyone for watching. Um, I will see you soon, and remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.